Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's the podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and today is another solo episode. Unfortunately, I'm not joined with a guest. But um, for today's topic, it, it's kind of something that I've been racking in my brain a little bit, and I, I'm doing this episode more as a way to kind of like, you know, maybe gauge other people's perspective on this idea or, you know, to basically just kind of think through my own thoughts. So, you know, um, you know, like usual, it's more of like kind of going to be like a rambling nature thing. Um, if this isn't your cup of tea, I will hopefully get back to interviews, you know, in the following episodes, but I figure it's been a while since I put out anything and, you know, whatever, I want to have some fun. Um, for those of you who are viewing this as a video podcast, um, what you're watching is a public domain film. I believe it's like Three Bad Brothers or something. I've never seen it myself, uh, so I have no idea what it's about, and I don't want to get too distracted by the footage, at least from my own feed. So um, enjoy. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. I, I'll link the channel in like the episode description or what have you. But um. Yeah, so as you could tell from the title, I kind of want to talk about um, the broader concept of lore and specifically as it pertains to like film, but you know, even television or, or like, I guess lore in general. But like when I, when I had, when I was planning out this episode in my mind, I was thinking of it more in context of film, especially with um, just, I, I guess a little while ago, not, not that long ago, we had, you know, the sequel to Avatar. But, um, yeah, to discuss lore, like, it's kind of, like, place in film and, um, what we're, what we're kind of seeing, like, the current trends within now. So, um, I guess, I, I guess to start this, I would want to go into, like, you know, like, current trends that we have with film to kind of, to kind of get you in the headspace of where I'm approaching this topic. So, right now, in you know, film, we still have, we surprisingly still have Marvel films. I mean, not that, I, not that I ever thought that they would actually like go away, you know, but I, I don't know. I thought, I mean, we're kind of seeing it like their popularity is kind of, I mean, it gets like peaks occasionally, right? Where like some Marvel films are, you know, doing, you know, do decently. I, I can't remember how well Quantumania did. But, um, you know, um, yeah, it, it's, it's just kind of like so-so. And I think a bigger trend that we're seeing is, you know, video game adaptations. So recently we had like some monster hits in regards to like The Last of Us TV series, which I enjoyed and I was surprised worked as well as it did. Um, I was actually tempting to... Uh, talk about that for an episode but it, it's kind of a similar reason why i'm also not talking about like the super mario movie is because everybody's talking about it. like everyone's talking about it and i'm not sure if there's like anything i can add like you could probably find some derivative of my opinion somewhere out there but suffice it to say i guess you know if you just i i liked it i i did enjoy the series a lot i think um it did a lot of things that um, right in a video game adaptation it did some things that i normally don't think would work but i again i'm I'm very surprised that it um did uh so we had like the last of us um if you go a while back we had like the and you know i mean okay i'll count it like the cyberpunk edge runners adaptation that was really good uh, you had Arcane from League of Legends. More recently, you had, like, the Mario Brothers movie, which, while I wouldn't call it good, it certainly was successful, in the very least. I mean, it was it was okay. Yeah, it had its own... It had its problems, but, you know, um, I, I wouldn't say I, like, regretted seeing it, or I, I wouldn't even go as far as to say I regretted seeing it, like, in theaters. Right? But, okay... So we're supposed to be talking about lore, right? Um, so the point that I'm trying to get across is that, you know, we're obviously trying to adapt a lot of, like, kind of... And I mean this in, like, the nicest way I can. Like, a lot of nerdy um, 
you know, properties, a lot of nerdy, like, you know, um, adaptations and what have you. And I, and with that, we're kind of getting a rise of like, you know, very lore dense media, right? Like media that has a lot of context behind it. And the example that I think of the most is honestly, uh, avatar, right? Which, um, a lot of people, especially, you know, who are more casual, like film goers are actually surprised to learn that like avatar yeah, it has a lot of lore to it. Like, they go into, like, how these aliens use the bathroom, how they, like, construct their music. It is bonkers, right? And it's, like, I wouldn't have ever... Like, for something that essentially just began as, like, a three-hour film, right? Like, you don't need that much lore for, like, one film, right? Or do you? Uh, th that's the thing. Okay, so... And, I mean, outside of that, you know, again, you have, like, League of Legends has its own lore, but what have you. So, I, I guess what I would want to start with on this one is, like, the purpose of, like, lore in in regards to film. Because it, it takes different forms with, like, television and, like, video games and things like that. Because, you know, with TV and video games, especially more so with video games, you're given, like, a world to explore right or you know in a series you're following characters in the world so it makes sense that like lore would be i i i guess i would argue like more needed there whereas in a film like it, it would it's nice but like clearly av like a lot of people can watch like avatar without knowing the deeper context of the lore and still follow the story um and I know I'm using lore in a broad sense because it could include any form of world building, like including things that are revealed through just the basic plot. Um, like, you know, oh, they're trying to obtain, you know, they're trying to get unobtainium, they live on Pandora, you know, and just different things like that. And, but I, I guess I wonder, like, the I guess the pros and cons, if you will, of like building lore because like from a positive side, like obviously a lot of people, especially people who become like super fans of these properties, like they do want that lore because it kind of does it helps like enhance their enjoyment to like learn these little quirky things about, you know, these universes and what have you that they like grow to love. Like we see this with like, you know, Star Wars and Star Trek. And what have you. And I, I think also from a filmmaking perspective, it obviously does help to, you know, inspire stories or help even in a way to kind of guide how stories should be constructed. So the example I like to give is with Star Wars, right? Um, one of the biggest series right now with Star Wars is The Mandalorian, you know, and Mandalorian kind of spawned from like, lore derived from the mainline series with like you know boba fett and like you know what have you um and yeah I, I think it just works all around for like community building in that regard that you know obviously you have like these communities of like star wars fan that just congregate on um oh my god they're making it i'm sorry <laughs> get some i'm sorry um <laughs> I look over for like one second, I get distracted. Um, but no, like obviously like people do like, you know, get congregating in these communities to discuss the lore and um, things like that. But at the same time, and l l let me, again, this is where I'm kind of spitballing more with you. Like for myself, I've gone on record in saying that in terms of like exposition or in terms of like, you know, I, I, I guess I would say storytelling broadly. I, I always think, like, less is more, right? Um, and that sometimes I, I feel like a lot of writers, a lot of directors, or what have you, are, are too afraid to um, kind of let information sit vaguely with audiences. Like, there, there is this need to kind of over-explain every aspect of your world. Um, I, I, in the past, the example I cited was, you know, Death Stranding, where I felt like 
the need to like over explain every aspect of the world ruined like kind of an interesting like plot twist in it um if you want to listen to the episode from my thoughts you know you can find it in the in the anchor directory unfortunately it's not on youtube for any of my youtube listeners um but yeah i always think like less is more with like storytelling and world building and i i get it like for some genres you know it's kind of expected right like i think like high fantasy or even um sorry (laughs) oof sorry um, for like high fantasy or like sci-fi, right? Like it is expected. Like it's almost become expected to build like lore around it because it, it'd be such a weird outlier to not do it. Um, but it, it's even coming to a point where even outside of that genre, we feel like we have to build like complex, um lore for our like shows and our um you know and for our media broadly and the example that i would give is like john wick now don't get me wrong john i love john wick's like i i guess at least in the context of the films like the subtle lore to it you know where it's like you could clearly tell there's kind of like this you know and how they hint at the inner machinations of this whole underground, you know, criminal syndicate that they have with like assassins and like, you know, the Continental Hotel and what have you. And I and I know that's like an appeal to like a lot of people. Right. But um I, I guess my worries also stem from they're they're gonna come out with like the Continental T V show. I think it's gonna be like a Peacock exclusive or what have you. And you know I, I, I don't know if, like, by them doing that, they'll reveal, like, too much lore and it'll kind of, like, you know, diminish the, the charm of how the film approaches its world building, right? And its overall, like, storytelling in that regard. I, I mean, I doubt it will. I, I don't know how... I, I, I think either way, people will still love it, like, at best. Or I think at worst, people will just ignore the Continental, like, that Continental show. And, you know, and people will still obviously enjoy the John Wick films or even, like, the side films because they're also doing, you know, other films in the series, too. But, um... So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, I wonder... And this is kind of the idea that I was like spitballing more in my head was like, is it, would it be possible to build like a large sci-fi or high fantasy um, franchise without like, with like a minimalist approach to your lore, you know, to where there's kind of enough there to where you can like follow it, but like, most of it isn't explained or there are like huge chunks of it that aren't like explained right because in a lot of ways that would mimic you know i guess for the lack of a better term our real life lore right like there's a lot of things in our universe we don't understand so i mean i i think it would be cool to kind of approach like a sci-fi or a high fantasy like franchise in the same regard where you're kind of thrusted into this world where you're given like this basic story but like it's clear that they're living in like a world with its own history outside of itself but you never get to learn that like at all and it's all it's all like left up to speculation and i don't know if that would be possible like would like fans be receptive to it um i mean i guess the parallel you could draw is with like horror films because horror films also kind of pull from like a more nebulous lore depending on where you look at but the issue is right that um and this is kind of another issue i was considering um in regards to to approaching this idea is that you know the longer that any franchise kind of runs the you know you just naturally build up like lore and you know a canon and whatever um 
And I, so I guess, is there any way to like minimize that process or to, I, I don't know, approach that process in a different way? Um, uh, because I mean, even like franchises and, you know, um, like films with established lore, like as they go on, like, I mean, taking Star Trek, for example, you know, it's expanded like years over time. They've had to like retcon and like things, you know, retcon and things like that just for the sake of storytelling, which I always like kind of support on my own end. I, I always think first and foremost, outside of, you know, um, focusing on a, you know, quote unquote, like internal logic of your storytelling, you should focus on like emotional beats and establish like what works within the context of the most immediate project you're working on rather than focusing on like, oh, does this fit within the canon or does this work, you know, in context with the lore of the world and like the, you know, and granted, I guess, I mean, there are, there are limitations to that. Obviously, you don't want, like, characters to go, you know, too far to where it just completely, like, pulls people away and everybody has, you know, their own, like, threshold for, like, how far a story can push or, like, bend its own rules before it, like, pulls somebody out of the narrative. But, I, I don't know, I guess I'm always more looser in that regard. I'm, um, uh, like, especially with, um, the example uh, I like to use is, oh, what was it? Um, the second new Star Wars, the second film in the new Star Wars trilogy, um, not Rise of Skywalker, the one before that. <laughs> Damn it, I can't remember. But yeah, the Ryan Johnson one, right? I I think a lot of people um, thought like what he did in terms of like the narrative was like a step too far and like. I don't want to get into it right now, but then like breaking these like, you know, world building rules that were never like really established. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I, I do wonder, like, I guess I am looking for like interesting ways for lore to be built and Again, I know like most people don't even interact with it. I mean, to be honest, with a lot of franchises I enjoy, I don't fully interact with the lore myself. It's like something that I just occasionally look at for like fun. And I know there's like entire like YouTube communities, entire like people that build their careers off. Because like I think they call themselves like lore masters, and I wouldn't want to take away like any jobs from them. You know, if you're passionate about a franchise, I'm I'm glad people are like you know, and a able to, like, invest this time into it and kind of to, like, again, like, build communities around it. So I, I don't want to be, like, a jerk and say, oh, no, that's bad. Because I don't think it is. But I don't know. I, I guess, um, you know, uh, if anybody in my audience or anybody that listens to this, maybe you want to comment and, like, want to kind of discuss if there's anything like what I'm talking about where, like, the lore is just kind of, you know, in terms of like a more subtle approach to lore. I don't, I don't feel like it's impossible, but nothing comes to mind. Like I'm even trying to think through, like, like I said, like horror franchises, like no, like Slender Man has like its own lore, but against like it's so loose because it was it was like established more in film maybe that would or like on the internet so maybe that would count but mm, i don't know i don't know god i hope the the public domain film i put on isn't too racismo <laughs> it's from 1926 i don't know I, I saw like some native americans i don't know if they're doing like some oh some brown oh god i hope it's not oh man it's on YouTube. So, I mean, if this guy didn't get banned for it, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but getting off topic. Um, but, yeah, I guess those are, like, my main, like, bullet point thoughts on it. Um, I'd love to know what other people think about it. Like, maybe you're taking, and maybe some people are taking the opposite approach and they like love that like a lot of franchises that we're putting out now are like very 
lore dense and like you could just get lost in these universes outside of like the main properties that most people engage with them in um some food for thought you know um but i think that's pretty much gonna do it for me uh do i have any major updates at the moment um not that i can think of i guess i should do my ad read here uh yeah, today's episode is, as always, sponsored by Salty Llama. Are you tired of lugging around heavy bottles of detergent and dealing with the mess of measuring the right amount? Introducing Salty Llama, the ultra-concentrated, ultra hypoallergenic, toxins-free laundry detergent strips that are revolutionizing the industry. Their eco-friendly strips are easy to use. Just toss one in with your laundry and you're good to go. With Salty Llama, you can say goodbye to harsh chemicals and hello to a cleaner, greener laundry experience. But it's not just good for the environment. It's good for you and your family. The hyperallergenic formula is gentle on sensitive skin, making it perfect for babies, kids, and adults with allergies. Don't just take my word for it. Give Salty Llama a try and see the difference for yourself. You'll be amazed at how powerful and effective their detergent strips are. Visit www.saltyllama.com and order yours today. And don't forget to use the code PODCASTPASTA at checkout for a special discount. Again, that's Salty Llama. Thank you uh, for the continued support, uh, which I should have checked... If I still have the account with them before reading that, but hey, I'm a professional, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's gonna do it for me. Um, in terms of any future updates, you know, it's it's kind of up in the air. My schedule might be changing soon. It might not, but you know, um, either way, it's always fun to like kind of talk through this. You know, to you know do this show even if sometimes it's just me rambling but um yeah uh if you want to support the show uh you could do so in a number of different ways i have my um patreon account oh wow i'm i'm fading fast sorry uh i have my patreon account so if you want to do like a monthly um donation you could do so through that uh i can't remember patreon lets you do like single month donations but if you want to like do single month donations i would recommend my ko-fi more um simply because it's built more for that uh ko-fi also does let you do the monthly but again um i would stick more with the patreon especially since you get like free merch on patreon uh speaking of merch i also have my merch store which you could get a whole bunch of, you get shirts, mugs, what have you. I, a little while ago, released, you know, a new design in collaboration with uh, George Isaac, who did my logo um, and everything. And he did a phenomenal job. I think in April, I might get him to do some more work. I'll have to see about that. Um, but yeah, there's also, uh, all this is available, uh, is linked on my Twitter account at Podcasting Pasta. Again, that's at Podcasting Pasta, all one word. Um, P's are capitalized. I don't know if it matters. Uh, it should be joined together through a link tree link at the, you know, in my uh, profile page. And I might, I might include that link in the episode description here. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for um, joining me, for new listeners, for old listeners. I'm glad that you uh, gave me at least a little bit of your time. Uh, and I will join you all next time. Um, and let me just see one more frame of this silent film, sorry. I wonder if I should do commentary on silent film. Like, just like a watch through of it. That might be fun. I'm, hmm, Maybe. If I get enough support, I might. But uh, we are looking at Hoss Face. Jeez. 1920s. Okay, anyways, uh, take care. And uh, talk to you all later? No. Yeah, just take care, everyone. Later.